I know a lot of you are here because of my Neovim content. I'm about to betray you. The greatest anime betrayal of all time. I've been using Emacs. Doom Emacs, that is. Not a DIY Emacs. Okay, I'm not, I'm not like a lisp god yet. I've been really liking it. Now, I jumped to Doom Emacs the first time. <laughs> I've gone multiple times back and forth between NeoVim and Doom Emacs. Mostly, I jumped back to NeoVim because I didn't have a debugger set up and working in Doom Emacs. Still don't, but I'm not doing as much debugging. I'm really liking it. My main reason for jumping was org mode. I wanted to try out org mode and kind of see how I liked it. Is it worth the hype? I really, I, it's, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. The fact that I can export everything to Markdown, HTML, anything like, dude, this might even overtake whatever efforts I was going to make with my blog. <laughs> like maybe I'll just write everything in org mode and export it to HTML. Done. <laughs> I jumped to org mode to try out a bunch of different features. Like it's a lot more full fledged than my pretty bare bones NeoVim config. And I just kind of wanted to see what it was like living on the other side. And it's pretty decent. I do think like the main things that stand out to me are the fact that when I put an opening parentheses, there's a closing one automatically. <laughs> it's such a small thing, but it has really made me happy. I'm going to have to update my new of config to do something similar. I also really like Maggot. Maggot has been pretty nice to work with. I usually just use the Git CLI and I've always been happy with that, but Maggot is really nice for just being able to review what your changes were before you commit them. I've just tried to make an effort to like be more in the Emacs realm. So I've been doing like all of my Git activity with Megit, I don't know, I still really, I, I don't find that it's like a better experience necessarily than the Git CLI, but it is the best Git integration that I've had with an IDE, I gotta say. I also really like that it is, feels very natural. It does feel like I'm just in NeoVim. If I wanna like get better at using Doom Emacs, it's great too that I can search through all of the commands and that it gives me a shortcut if there is one that exists. It'll tell me what the shortcut is so that next time I can just become like a more efficient user just by using the software. I don't have to read anything about it to like become a better user. And I think that that is a huge, huge plus in the UX department that Doom is doing really well. My main goal with exploring Doom Emacs is wanting to figure out what other features there might be that other developers are using that I'm maybe not taking advantage of that might be worth trying. So there's a lot to it. It's definitely a bigger, <laughs> bigger piece of software than NeoVim, but I'm having fun just playing around with it. And I've been like really shocked at how immediately productive I've been. I, I think they've done a really exceptional job at like choosing their keybinds and everything and their shortcuts for things. It's felt pretty good. I'll also give you an update on the dot file situation. I've been using GNU Stow. I know someone mentioned that on my NeoVim video like forever ago. I completely forgot about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it basically just creates a symlink between your dot .files repo, whatever packages you have in your dot .files repo, like locally on your machine, symlinks to where that package config lives on your machine. And then whatever changes you make to your config files are then obviously like linked. It's the same state in both spots. And then it's like super easy to track. So typically, if you wanna use my dot .files these days, what you can do is you can clone the repo. That dot .files repo now lives, I don't know, in some directory on your machine. And mine is in the home directory. And then I go into the dot .files repo. That then has it organized with a certain uh, directory structure that is organized by package within these packages is the path to their configuration files relative to your home directory. So you'll see in my NeoVim one, for example, there is uh, the NeoVim package and then there's a .config slash NeoVim and that has all of my configuration files. Now, what you wanna do and you wanna make sure you have version control working and set up for whatever .files repo you wanna do. So like this is in case you're creating your own .files repo use version control. What I usually do, I'll use stow package name in the uh, root directory of my dot files, stow package name, and then I'll use the adopt flag. And what happens here is that your source directory, meaning the directory that you're in when you're running the stow command, the package that exists there is going to have its state overwritten by the target. So 
This means that if I'm in my dot files directory and I'm changing my NeoVim config, it's going to overwrite the state of whatever's in my dot files directory with whatever I have set up in my local configuration for NeoVim. So once I do that, then my state has now changed in the dot files repo. And usually I'll, I'll use git restore and then because it's already made that sim link at this point, then my config is going to get updated in both spots. If I actually had my dot files outdated, then when I do the stow adopt, I could actually just keep that and then commit those changes. I have found that to be the easiest. I used to use a separate alias for my dot files. I could add specific files or folders to be tracked for that repo. I just found it kind of messy. I did, it was nowhere near as smooth as you just using stow, but I do think stow is like super lightweight. That being said, I haven't really tried any other formal dot files management solutions out there. So I could just be completely ignorant and I have no idea. But I've also heard good things about Shamewa, which is written in Go, by the way, huge, and Ansible. I know that Prime at one point was using Ansible. I don't know if he's still using it, but I, I'm i not gonna lie. I read the docs for Ansible. I still kind of don't know what it does. It does something with configuration. You have playbooks. I don't know what playbooks are. I still, I, I need someone to explain it like I'm five. I don't get it. <laughs> That's the latest of what I've been up to. I've otherwise just been learning just straight up. Like I don't even have any main questions or anything like that. Like I'm just exploring what there is to know about computing. I've been reading the structure and interpretation of computer programs and the design patterns book kind of hopping back and forth between those two. They've been really good reads so far. I'm trying to get better at speed reading which is basically, I, I well, this is at least the, the pattern that I'm going in. I go kind of like waves is what I'm finding to be a good kind of tracking movement for my eyes to be able to get as many words as possible while still retaining comprehension. So far, it's been pretty good, but I cannot get through a full page without taking at least like some notes on it. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm trying to focus more on the concepts than the words themselves. And it's take, yeah, it's been a bit of an adjustment, but having my handy dandy notebooks has been really good for that. And I've also been using org mode. So what can I say? I'll probably do a productivity update on how I'm staying productive. But first I need to figure out my productivity <laughs> stack. I'm a little all over the place at the moment since I've just fully switched to Emacs. Oops. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.